Many years ago, a faraway village was under attack. It's not some regular enemies, but fire-breathing dragons. However, a young boy finds a secret about the dragons which makes them his slaves. Far away from other populations of humans, in a dangerous location, there's a village called Burke. It's been here for seven generations, but every single building is new because they rebuild them again after each fight with their sworn enemy. The only problems are the pests. Most places have mice or mosquitoes, but Burke has dragons. If it was someone else, he would immediately immediately leave the village, but the people living in Burke are all Vikings. They are strong, but stubborn. Within this village, there's one boy who's totally different from Vikings. His name's Hiccup. Everyone in this village has weird names, as they believe it will keep away the bad spirits. It's early in the morning, and even the sun hasn't risen yet, but dragons have already attacked the village. Their main purpose is to steal food. The chief of the village, and Hiccup's father, Stoic, advises his son to stay inside the house. Hiccup never gets to take part in the battle due to his naive body body, and incompetent fighting skills. He spent most of his time with the blacksmith named Gobber. With his assistance, Hiccup has learned to make weapons and gadgets. But the Vikings like to fight in traditional ways and call Hiccup's inventions useless. Even his dad doesn't appreciate his creativity and believes Hiccup will never be able to fight the dragons. He can't even lift an axe or a hammer. Hiccup wants to prove everyone wrong by hunting a dragon. He makes his preparations and looks around to choose which one he should kill. A natterhead is sure to get Hiccup at least noticed. Taking down a Gronkle would definitely impress a girl. A Zippleback will definitely be exotic. Its two heads will give its killer twice the status. And then there's the monstrous nightmare. Only the best Vikings go after those. They have this nasty habit of setting themselves on fire. But the ultimate prize is the dragon no one's ever seen. It's called the Night Fury. This thing never steals food, never shows itself, and never misses. No one has ever killed a Night Fury. Hiccup decides to go after it. He chooses a good spot to fire his catapult, and aims for the blue sparks released by Night Fury. He gives the shot and voila. He hits the dragon and can clearly hear his screams. Hiccup rushes to tell this to his father and requests them to immediately send a search team to capture Night Fury. Suddenly, a monstrous nightmare attacks Hiccup, and his father rushes to save him. Stoic gets really angry and scolds Hiccup for his careless acts. He believes that all Hiccup can bring disasters, and he doesn't have time for them because the winter is approaching, and Stoic has to arrange enough food for the whole village. All he wants from his son is to follow this simple order of not leaving his house, because Hiccup can be anything, but not a dragon hunter. These harsh words can't make Hiccup give up. He wants to be like the Vikings. Gobber advises him not to try becoming what he isn't. He should try to find his own talent. Despite this advice, Hiccup sneaks in the forest to look for the Night Fury. Meanwhile, Stoic calls a meeting to decide how they are going to store enough food for summer. Dragons keep stealing so they must put a permanent end to this. Stoic believes they should head out to find the dragon's nest and destroy it. Then the dragons will definitely migrate to a different land. At first, other warriors are doubtful about the plan. But then Stoic says that whoever stays behind will look after Hiccup. No one wants to deal with the clumsy kid, so they all join the deadly mission instead. Stoic leaves Hiccup in Gobber's hands. Moreover, he requests Gobber to train the young warriors, but Gobber advises him to let Hiccup get the training too. Stoic refuses immediately. Since birth, a Viking is strong enough to break stones, but Hiccup was never like that. Gobber understands the point, but Stoic cannot stay with his son forever. He should prepare the boy to face danger by himself. However, Hiccup is already taking dangerous steps. He finds the Night Fury lying in the jungle. He is completely trapped in ropes and waiting for its death. Hiccup can kill it easily and takes his head to the village. After that, no one is going to call him a loser. However, Hiccup has a really soft heart and takes pity on the poor dragon. He decides to let the dragon go and cuts all the ropes. At first, the dragon proceeds to attack him, but he lets the boy go because of his kindness. Hiccup returns home and encounters his dad. He wants to tell him that he has finally given up on becoming a dragon hunter because he can never kill a dragon for sure. In contrast, his father wants him to train for the battle. The training starts the next day. Hiccup enters the battlefield with other trainees, including Fishlegs, George Ensign, the twins Toughnut and Roughnut, and Hiccup's crush Astrid. Gobber releases the dangerous dragon and tells the kids to fight it. All of the trainees are new to this experience, but Hiccup is the most coward of them all. He just takes a shield and keeps hiding here and there. He doesn't even try to strike the dragon once. Gobber puts the dragon back in the cage and tells the kids to try harder next time. Hiccup goes into the jungle again to look for the Night Fury. He's living in a small valley and makes Hiccup wonder why the dragon is not flying away. Hiccup takes out his notebook and draws a rough sketch of the dragon. Later that night, Gobber tells all of the trainees about their weaknesses. He hands them a manual about the dragons and asks them to read it carefully. None of the trainees are interested in
in reading and hand it over to Hiccup. He goes through it, but doesn't find any information about Night Fury. The next day at training, he asks Gobber about the mysterious dragon, but he has no information either. Hiccup can't concentrate on the training and causes accidents to other trainees as well. Astrid is fed up with him and scolds him for taking this crucial training so lightly. Hiccup doesn't care what he says and rushes back to check on Night Fury. Hiccup notices that the dragon is struggling to get something to eat, so he brings him a fish. Night Fury appears toothless at first, then his teeth come out, but they aren't as sharp as other dragons. After eating half of the fish, Night Fury gives it to Hiccup to eat. To make the dragon happy, Hiccup chews on the raw fish. Then he tries to touch the dragon, but he doesn't allow it. Hiccup keeps sitting nearby and draws a picture of Night Fury on the ground. The dragon also picks up a tree branch and tries to draw. After playing together, Night Fury gets comfortable with the kind human being and finally lets him touch his head. Hiccup loves his new friend and names him Toothless. Later that night, Gobber shares his tips for taking down a dragon. He suggests that one should try to damage the dragon's wings or tail so it can't fly. This makes Hiccup realize why Toothless can't fly. He gets to his workshop and designs a tail for the dragon. The next day, he brings different kinds of fish for the dragon, but he hates the eel the most. While Toothless is busy eating, Hiccup puts on the artificial tail piece. It works, and the dragon can fly again, but the artificial tail needs to be moved manually. The next day at training, Hiccup uses an eel to scare away the dragon, and shocks everyone. Afterward, he keeps on trying new artificial official tales on Toothless, and keeps learning more about dragons. He uses his knowledge to control the dragons on the battlefield, and impresses everyone. Hiccup eventually finds out that the dragons have no intention of harming the humans. They just want food. If they are treated the right way, they can become good friends. Astrid gets suspicious of Hiccup's sudden progress and stalks him but doesn't find anything. Meanwhile, Hiccup has mastered the skill of riding Toothless. After a few days, Stoic and his team return after facing failure. However, Gobber has good news. Stoic doesn't have to worry about his son anymore. He can face the dragons more efficiently than anyone ever had. All the villagers have become fans of his exceptional skills. Stoic gets really excited and rushes to meet his son. He gives him a special helmet and looks forward to seeing his son killing dragons on the battlefield. However, Hiccup has no such intentions. The next day, he competes with Astrid. While the girl uses the traditional ways of fighting, Hiccup uses his knowledge to make the dragon lie down on his feet. The judge also announces Hiccup as the winner, and he qualifies for the final round. Astrid is still suspicious of Hiccup and follows him to the valley. There she encounters Toothless, but Hiccup assures her that the dragon is not harmful. Astrid refuses to trust him and decides to tell Stoic everything. Toothless picks her up and drops her on a high tree. Hiccup asks her to give him a chance to prove himself. They fly around the whole village and above the sky. The night settles in and they fly by the villagers' houses without getting noticed. Astrid finally gains trust and admires Hiccup's discovery. Suddenly, they are followed by the other dragons. All of them are carrying food and heading in the same direction. They stop on an island and get inside a cave with boiling lava. All the dragons are dropping down what they brought. There's a gigantic dragon living in this cave, and all the other dragons are just following his commands. Astrid and Hiccup get back to the valley after realizing that the dragons are threatened by the queen dragon to bring food. That's why they attack the village. Astrid wants to share this with their chief, but Hiccup believes others may not believe them so easily. He must use a different way. The next day in the finals, Hiccup has to face monstrous nightmare. Surprisingly, Hiccup drops all of his weapons and even puts down his helmet. He tells everyone that dragons can be handled with kindness. Stoic considers it as an insult and shouts to stop the fight. The noise scares the dragon and it attacks. Toothless senses that his human friend is in danger, and he rushes to save him. All the villagers are left in shock after seeing the Night Fury for the first time on their lives. They don't listen to Hiccup at all and capture Toothless. Hiccup tries to explain everything about the island and the Deadly Queen, but Stoic doesn't listen to all the details and decides to use Toothless to find the Dragon Island. He assumes that Hiccup has joined the Dragon's side against them. He's no more a Viking. The ships are prepared and all the Vikings head to the Dragon Island. Astrid asks Hiccup why he didn't kill Toothless at first sight. Hiccup reveals that he saw himself in Toothless. He was as frightened as him. Therefore, he helped the dragon. Astrid says Toothless must be frightened right now as well, so Hiccup should help him. Hearing this, Hiccup gets to the dragon cages and teaches all the youngsters how to
a bond with the dragons. Meanwhile, Stoic and others have reached the island. They break into the cave and see the numerous dragons living inside. They call an attack and all the dragons fly away immediately. The Vikings assume that they have won, but they don't know what's coming afterward. The gigantic queen steps out and scares away all the warriors. Her fire breath burns down all the ships, and Viking can't even run back home. Suddenly, they see the trainees flying there with dragons. While the others distract the queen, Hiccup rushes to help Toothless. The ship wrecks and they drown in water. Stoic pulls out Hiccup and then helps Toothless as well. He apologizes to his son for not trusting him, and confesses how proud he feels for Hiccup. The boy feels motivated and fights against the queen. He distracts the queen to make her follow them high in the clouds. Once they reach a significant height, Hiccup instructs Toothless to burn down the queen's wings. The giant dragon falls down, but Hiccup slips down as well. Toothless follows his mate as well. After the fire settles down, Stoic moves forward to find his son, but there's only Toothless. Stoic blames himself for everything and moans on his son's death. Suddenly, Toothless opens his eyes and shows that Hiccup is safe between his wings. The boy opens his eyes in his house. He has lost his foot in the battle, but what he gained in return is worth a lot. Now he has a village where humans and dragons live peacefully together. Never judge a book by its cover. Sometimes the truth is way deeper than what we see. Remember to be kind so others can comfortably open up to you.